we gather today in the midst of the present restrictions to reflect on the suffering journey of Jesus Christ to Calvary. As we accompany Jesus on his journey, let us take a moment to remember how difficult that journey really was. He carried his cross through the narrow, crowded streets of Jerusalem. It was Passover time and so the city was full of people, many of whom mocked, jostled and took pleasure in watching Jesus struggle with his heavy burden. The way was often steep. The journey that Jesus made on that day remains a symbol of Christianity in the world as it struggles with its own crosses and failures and the challenges of modern life. Our towns are filled with people who carry their personal crosses, who are bruised, battered and broken. Through these stations of the cross, Jesus is inviting us to journey with him and to reflect on his suffering as it continues in the lives of his people. In solidarity with all who suffer, let us pray that we will be open to whatever he wants us to see, hear and understand. Jesus is condemned to death. We remember the cross of Jesus. Jesus was captured at night, taken away by soldiers, stripped of his garments, interrogated, tortured, crowned with sharp thorns, and now handed over to be condemned to death by Pontius Pilate, death on a cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We name the crosses of today. Jesus is condemned unjustly by those who did not understand him and by those who were frightened of what he did and said. We continue to condemn people unjustly today because they don't conform to our way of thinking. There are also the people who have been justly condemned, who have been found guilty, serve their sentence and ask for forgiveness. Does our society really forgive? Or do we continue to condemn them over and over again? We pray. Jesus, give us the grace to see, respect and love you in all people, both innocent and guilty. Change our hearts that we may see with new eyes those we might otherwise condemn. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Jesus takes up his cross. We remember the cross of Jesus. Jesus was led away, carrying the cross by himself. A cross is just not a piece of wood. It is everything that makes life difficult. In the way that he carried all the burdens of his life, but in particular, the way in which he carries this awful final burden, he transforms the cross from a symbol of condemnation into one of liberation. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because of your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. We name the crosses of today. There are burdens that we all carry. Some are very obvious, and others we take great care to hide. The invitation of Jesus on the cross is to hand over these burdens to him. We pray. May we see your presence, Lord, in all the burdens we carry today. May we be more aware of the crosses that others bear and make time to alleviate their burden. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Jesus falls for the first time. We remember the cross of Jesus. Jesus falls. 
Here, Jesus shows us that being heroic does not mean staying on one's feet at all costs. Being heroic means getting up again after falling and starting off on the road chosen. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We name the crosses of today. Look at Jesus' fall under his cross. He doesn't look much like God when he fell into the dirt on the way to Calvary. The crowds look on with disdain at this man whom they see as a sinner. Like the crowd, we often have only condemnation and rejection for those we see as sinners. We judge them without knowing about their trials. Do we even suspect the part we might have played in knocking them down? What do we do to help them? We pray. Jesus, it's easy to see your image in saints. Help us to see you in the sinners too. You had a place in your heart for the divorced Samaritan woman, Zacchaeus, the good thief, and for those who crucified you. Give us this same compassionate heart. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Jesus meets his mother. We remember the cross of Jesus. When Jesus and his mother meet, they just look at each other. Words cannot express how they feel. What he saw in his mother's eyes must have hurt him more than the raw wounds and the pain that he was suffering. This for Jesus is the most painful time of all. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We name the crosses of today. Jesus carries the heaviest burden of the loss of his family, the sundering of the earthly loving relationship between mother and child. This was not of his making. The violence inflicted upon him etched into the very heart of his mother as she watched the agony of her son. We see Mary's pain in the mothers and fathers who watched their children giving up their life to drugs, addictions and suicides in the women and men who suffer violence and the ongoing threat of violence in their home from spouse or child. We see Mary's pain in the child coping with the breakdown of a parent's marriage, in the couple trying desperately to rebuild their relationship and family anew. We pray. Jesus, we remember the gaze that rested between you and your mother. In that moment of pain, there was also a moment of deep and enduring love. Jesus, give us the courage to bring that love into the deepest recesses of our homes, to our children and to our spouses, to those places of fracture and disharmony in our circle of relationships. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Simon helps Jesus. We remember the cross of Jesus. Simon the Cyrene, a stranger in the city, did not know Jesus, but that did not matter. What matters here is that in this moment of need, Simon was capable of offering his strength to one who had nothing left. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We name the crosses of today. Look at Jesus, who lies hidden and unknown beneath every person in need. Across our world, we see human suffering in the faces of strangers. 
people we know of but do not know, coping with floods and drought, with the devastating effects of climate change. We pray, Lord, help us to grasp our opportunities to be a Simon in our world. In those times when we can help, let us have the generosity to do so. Lord, may we have the humility to accept all the Simons along our road who reach out to help us in our moments of need. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We remember the cross of Jesus. Veronica was so moved by the sight of Jesus' suffering that she courageously moved out from the crowd to wipe the blood and sweat from his face with a towel. She was rewarded when the image of his face was transferred to the towel. It is a suffering face, disfigured with wounds, yet this is the only image of himself that Jesus chose to leave with us. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We name the crosses of today. Today the visible face of Christ, the Church, stands before us still wounded and disfigured. Disfigured by its own sins of abuse of children and power, and creased with the wounds of hurt and betrayal. The face of Christ calls us to look upon and heal the sin of our church. We pray. Jesus, give your wounded church the courage of Veronica, so that we may wash the face of Christ clean from the disfigurements of our sin. Help us to bring healing to the scars that hide the beauty of your face to our world. Give us the faith to continue to build your church as a visible sign of your love and compassion. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Jesus falls for the second time. We remember the cross of Jesus. Stretched to breaking point by his awful scourging. Bowed under the weight of the cross, worn out by the abandonment of all his friends, Jesus stumbles again. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We name the crosses of today. All around us people are overburdened by the crosses they carry. They struggle and sometimes fall. There are those who have lost their jobs and feel that they have little hope of finding another. Those who live with the prospect of unemployment and those who struggle to keep others in work. There are those who suffer because of failures in our financial, health and political systems. Jesus is with each one of us, however we fall, and there he chooses to love and save us. We pray. Jesus, from deep within yourself, you found the courage and strength to get up once again and continue the journey. Give us your strength to keep going, even when hope is dim. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Jesus beats the women of Jerusalem. We remember the cross of Jesus. The women of Jerusalem wept when they saw how Jesus suffered. Jesus recognized their distress. He broke his silence for the first time, spoke to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, 
Do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We name the crosses of today. Look at Jesus and listen to his message for us today. Weep for the children who are abused. Weep for the women who are victimized. Weep for men and women who suffer from the tyranny that controls their lives and prevents them from feeling lovable. Weep for the young who cannot find a job or a way of life. Weep for the old who are forgotten. Weep for people who starve in the shadow of abundance. Weep for people who are homeless, in exile or seeking refuge. We pray, Lord, open our hearts to the suffering of all people in our world. Give us the generosity of spirit to help us recognize their pain, the courage to challenge the systems that place intolerable burdens on them, and the compassion to support them. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Jesus falls for a third time. We remember the cross of Jesus. Jesus falls for a third time, broken and exhausted physically and emotionally. Lying on the ground, Jesus must decide, does he get up once more, or does he just stop and give up? we see him rise again. Jesus shows us that we can go on, even if nobody else thinks that is possible. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We name the crosses of today. Many in our world today feel that their burden is too much to carry. They cannot bear any more. Crushed by the weight of their cross, they feel unable to get up, unable to go on. In Jesus, we find our hope and our encouragement. Jesus is with us and Jesus is our strength. We pray. Lord, we pray that when our strength fails, when our hope fades and when our spirit grows weary, that we will put our unbounded trust in you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Jesus is stripped of his clothing. We remember the cross of Jesus. As the clothes were ripped from Jesus, he was stripped of his dignity in front of an irreverent mob. Jesus sacrifices everything. He holds nothing of himself back. Here on the threshold of death, even more intensely than during his lifetime, he is a being for others. He surrenders everything in order to ransom all. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We name the crosses of today. Look at Jesus and the absolute indignity inflicted upon him by society. Jesus continues to be stripped of his dignity, and those who have their good name taken from them and the intimate details of their lives exposed through the media. Society takes on the role of judge and jury as we curiously devour the details. We pray. Forgive us, Lord, for prying into people's lives. Forgive us for being consumers of gossip under the name of news. May we respect the dignity of others and leave judgment to God. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. 
Amen. Jesus is nailed to the cross. We remember the cross of Jesus. Huge iron nails are hammered through his wrists and through his ankles. There is no defence. The hand that has wiped blindness from the eyes, the hand that opened the seal of deafness, the hand that touched a heart and cured a leper, the hand that blessed children and those with disability, the carpenter's hand is joined to the wood again. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We name the crosses of today. Jesus continues to be crucified in the ten children who die every minute of hunger in our world. He is crucified in all who are maimed, damaged and displaced because of war. He is crucified in all who are marginalised in our society because of their race, sexuality or gender. He is crucified in those who are abused physically, sexually or emotionally. He is crucified in those who are trafficked across the world. He is crucified in the exploitation of the earth and its resources. We pray. Jesus, we pray on behalf of those who cannot reach out to you at this moment. We pray for all the victims of violence, those who suffer it and those who inflict it. We pray especially for children, for the elderly and those too vulnerable to defend themselves. May victims of cruelty and oppression know that you are always with them. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Jesus dies on the cross. We remember the cross of Jesus. As the life of Jesus ebbs away, his words are not of condemnation or of pity for himself, but of forgiveness. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We name the crosses of today. There is much to seek forgiveness for in our world today. Hunger, poverty, violence, abuse, war, neglect, corruption, the list seems endless. As Jesus dies on Calvary, he challenges us to love our enemies, to let go of hurt, to ask for forgiveness, and when we cannot find it in our hearts to forgive, to ask God to do it for us. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We pray. Let us stand with those who watched and prayed in silence while Jesus breathed his last. As we cannot measure love, so we cannot dilute this ultimate act of love and forgiveness with words. Let our love span the silence, Lord. Let our love and forgiveness speak your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Jesus is taken down from the cross. We remember the cross of Jesus. Now Mary takes the broken body of her son in her arms. In her grief, she remembers the words of her son over the bread. This is my body, broken for you. And over the wine, this is my blood poured out for you. She remembers that little baby in Bethlehem, worshipped by shepherds and kings. She remembers the days when the crowds followed him, and she is full of sorrow. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross 
you have redeemed the world. We name the crosses of today. Mary's grief is our grief too. As Mary cradles the lifeless body of her son and offers him back to the Father, she stands with all parents who have held their children close to them in death. Those lost through accidents or acts of violence, those who have died by suicide, those who have died suddenly or after illness. Mary grieves with all who sorrow for loved ones, parents, siblings, family members, friends. We pray. Help us, Lord, to accept the partings that must come. Help us to offer our loved ones back to you as Mary offered her son. Faced with the silence of death, let us not despair, but find hope. May the finality of death not oppress us. Help us to trust in you, the Lord of the living and the dead. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Jesus is laid in the tomb. We remember the cross of Jesus. That night his body lay in the dark earths of the world, a seed dying in the winter of all spirits. All those who had loved him felt emptied and exhausted. There seemed no longer any sense or purpose in anything, but at least no more harm could come to him. They closed the tomb and left. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We name the crosses of today. There are times when we are overcome by the darkness of the tomb, by the countless deaths that we experience each day. But the answer to all our grieving and despair lies in this place. The world is now the tabernacle of God. The grain of wheat, sown in darkness and in death, has indeed yielded a rich harvest. Our presence here gives witness to that. Jesus' death was not in vain. We pray. Jesus, each day you put before us life or death. Help us always to choose life. We pray for all those we have known who have died and for those who have no one to pray for them. We ask for the gift of faith when we are faced with the darkness of the tomb and our own death approaches. May we have eyes to see the promise of new life that the darkness can hold. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Jesus is raised from the dead. He is not dead. Where does resurrection begin? It begins with the empty tomb, with the women who come and go again puzzled, perplexed, in wonder at the angel's message. It continues with the men who race eagerly to the tomb to see for themselves. Jesus is not dead. He offers peace to the fearful disciples in the upper room and breaks the bread at the table in Emmaus. He is risen. All our crosses, all our pain, all our sin are healed, forgiven and transformed. 
Christ is risen. Although his risen body bears the marks of his suffering, his pain is gone. Mourning turns into dancing. Grief turns into joy. Despair turns to hope. And fear turns to love. The eternal dance of new life goes on and on and on. He will come again. Lord, give us eyes to see that a new creation has begun. A new earth and a new heaven are proclaimed. And a new beginning for humanity is announced in your Son's resurrection. May this new beginning begin in me and in each one of us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. To gain the indulgence for the way of the cross that we've just followed, we pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis' intentions. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free you are the saviour of the world. <laughs>